What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday, starting of the week. All right, so this was a topic to where a lot of people were asking about doing a tax video. So with that being said, I'm going to start a series on to this in a way. Uh, and eventually I'm going to do a overtime that's considered like going to be all about taxes. So you guys come in here, pick my brain as much as you want to on to it. If I don't know the answer to it, I'll come out flat out and tell you I'm not going to make anything up. So with the program not having the forms updated yet, which is due to the IRS, all the state laws and stuff like that there, I can't really go into a whole lot of detail in this video. But what I'm going to go into is what I've already started doing, and that's preparing myself for when the tax stuff comes in. And it's basically what I call end-of-the-year closeout. So with a lot of people out there, you know, you're going to get 1099s from eBay, PayPal, all this stuff now. And a 1099 means that you earn money, and it could affect your regular um paycheck you guys get per week or month or however you guys get paid so here's an example say you make 30 i'm just throwing a number out there thirty five thousand dollars a year at your job and say you're taxed at 18 percent that's what the government says you should be taxed at up to a certain amount for your yearly uh gross income but now all of a sudden, say you sold $20,000 in sports cards that year, you're in a new tax bracket, which means you're not only going to owe money on that 20000 but your tax bracket for the other one might jump from 18 to 20%. So now you're going to owe another 2% there. What a lot of people don't realize, or if you go to places like H&R Block or Liberty Tax and all this, they do not know this stuff. They go through a class that's basically... Um, I'm trying to remember what they call a 1099 or whatever it was, the 1040 easy class to where they're just plugging your stuff in to have somebody do this. It costs some money because they have to do what they call a schedule C, which is an amendment to your tax return. So if you itemize, that's a schedule A. I know, I know a lot of tax, um, geek stuff that I'm talking here. Some might know it, some might not. So this is what I do at the end of the year. Now, during the whole course of the year, I have my own Excel spreadsheet that I use. It it looks mad crazy, okay? It's not something I would give to everybody to use because you'd be as confused as I am onto it. But you need some kind of tracking sheet. You start from January 1 to December 31st. And you can track it. You know, you can go to the bottom of your Excel spreadsheets and label every little tab with something new onto it. However, you need to keep track of it. But you need something like that in order to uh, double check math on this stuff because I've heard where PayPal has had given wrong numbers out on 1099s. It's crazy. Um, but you're going to need to do something like that there to make it easy on you for whatever you get into there and start doing your Schedule C. And yes, I will probably, once the everything gets updated across the board, make a dummy uh, Schedule C just to show you guys. Uh, what I'm talking about here. Again, this is just what you need to start looking at getting ready. Okay, and this is just some stuff that I throw out there to a lot of people. Keep track of all your receipts. A lot of our stuff nowadays is all digital. And what I do is I make a folder every year that says like 2021 taxes. And anything that deals with uh, something that I buy or use goes in that folder to have. Now, granted, I mean, if you're using PayPal, you're going to have all those records right there. But because I do a lot of other stuff, I got to have all them receipts together, just not on a spreadsheet, but in a folder somewhere. Uh, something I tell people, update your uh, numbers daily or weekly. I do mine as soon as I get the stuff, I knock it out on the spreadsheets, usually daily. All right, so that way you never fall behind. And make sure you save it, <laughs> because I'll tell you what, I had it where Excel... Um, for some reason, I had a glitch, and I think it was in October. It kicked me the whole way back to July, and I had to redo all my stuff. It was like two solid days of work. It was painful. So what I've done now is at the end of each week, I've emailed myself a hard copy just in case something like that would go on again. All right, a Schedule C. A lot of people are probably like, I have no idea what you're talking about, and that's completely understandable. 
But to, your Schedule C, you're either going to need an EIN or you could use your Social Security number. That's going to identify you as being what we call a like a home-based business, a sole proprietor, meaning you're you're making income underneath your name, you know, type deal. And EIN gets you like into places for tax purposes and stuff like that there. So you're going to need one of the two. If you need to get an EIN, go to irs.gov. And I mean, you can Google EIN. And I think those were free, the EINs, if I remember right. All right. Also, a Schedule C is where you're going to put everything you bought and sold, whether it was cards, supplies, items, etc., your mileage, shipping, um, any kind of fees and stuff like that. And I'm going to go into that here. And I'm going to try to make this pretty quick on a video. And then always, always remember, double check the IRS website for what's authorized to claim. So if you're like in a gray area and you're not sure, don't go on Facebook and ask somebody. <laughs> That's probably going to be the wrong thing to do. Go on the IRS website and look on there and see what they're saying. There's also IRS lawyers you could call if you're unsure about something. They'll help you out. They're not going to always give you the precise answer. Because, as anybody knows, regulations can be interpreted multiple ways. And it's going to depend on how you, you know, you look at it and stuff. All right. Let's go to the next slide. This is the only other slide I got. So, let me move my mouse. All right. So, I'm going to blow this up a little bit here. So this is stuff that I start itemizing, or however you want to say, put in categories so I know where everything goes. So all my items sold is on one sheet. But I also have it to where I list if it was an eBay sale or if it was off my website to where somebody used a credit card or something to pay for it. And I got to pay out through Stripe. Uh, whether it was a direct PayPal thing and stuff, or if I had a, went to a show, I do claim my cash. Um, you should, but I'm not telling you you have to. That's on to you. If you get caught on somebody's video and it don't add up right, you know, and you get audited, that you're going to be in some uh, trouble there. So you want to have everything that you sold together. And I break mine down by, like I said, eBay, uh, PayPal Direct, through the website, and cash. I think those were the only four that I had. Because my slabs went through PayPal the whole time. Okay, yep. Um, if you use Venmo, um, Cash App, I don't know of all the other ones, Facebook Pay and all that other stuff, you, you want all that stuff on there so you know where it went to. And that way, you if you were to dig for a receipt, you know what you're looking for. All right, then the next thing you want to do is everything you bought. Um, and I'm talking about when I say bought, like product-wise, whether you bought hobby boxes, retail boxes, individual cards, a collection. Put it on there. Of course, you need to know the dates and all that stuff onto it. Uh, mine usually looks like date, description, um, uh, purchase price. Then I might have, I'm trying to think how it goes, if there was any shipping involved. If sales tax was collected, if so, what state? Uh, if there was my slash fees, eBay fees, PayPal fees, all that stuff's on one massive spreadsheet. So at the end, I just have to hit the little auto ad that does it. All right, pay subscriptions, is subscriptions for your business. Even if you don't have a business, you're operating under your own name. You still pay this stuff. Whether you have a subscription to Card Ladder, and this is just some of the stuff I thought of. Vintage Card Price uh, Guide, Market Movers, Tax Jar, Random.org, Amazon Business. All that stuff there is a write-off. So if I paid $1,000 for all that stuff for all year, and I sold $20,000 worth of uh, cards, $1,000 that's coming off, so now I'm only taxed on $19,000 worth. So as you can see, we're trying to bring that 20000 down to a lower amount onto it. All right, postage costs. So every time you go and ship something, you know, through USPS, FedEx, DHL, UPS, you should have a record of it, how much you paid. If you got insurance on it, uh, certified, whatever it may be, total postage costs. Platform fees, such as MySlabs, ComC, eBay, PayPal, whatever you use to sell from, if they're taking a percentage of that money you're making in, 
you need to have something on there that says, you know, pay my slabs fees. I paid $180 to them. That's $180 off that total you're not getting taxed on. You know who it is? My slabs. All right, office supplies is how they word it on the Schedule C. And this is the stuff I put into it. Top loaders, tape, ink for my printer, bubble envelopes, labels. I bought a new computer with new monitors this year so I could process more. Um, printer, pens, markers, bubble wrap, etc. All that stuff goes on there because it's supplies that you're using, whether it's boxes, um, hobby armor stuff, all that stuff categorized in there. It costs you money. It's coming out of the profit you're making and selling your items, so you do need to deduct that. One last thing I forgot to cover. Um, if you are generating YouTube ad revenue or Google Sense ad revenue, or you're getting, say, somebody like, um, you see guys get getting paid sponsorships. you got to claim that money, too, because you know they are. <laughs> so that's another thing that goes into, you know, income in type deal. All right, if you set up at a card show, you're going to get your money back for the cost of the table. Say you bought displays, um, stands, all that stuff. You, that's all part of your show stuff that you can write off because you're using that. Even if you're <clears throat> using like paid marketing, another write off. Um, the we'll get into mileage here in a minute, but your mileage to and from the card shows are all into it too. If you're grading, your grading costs and shipping to that grading company. So say I like today my total was four hundred. I think seventy one dollars for a PSA order just popped. Four seventy one covers my grading plus the shipping to me. My shipping out to them might have been forty bucks. I'm claiming it because I had to pay for that. So th this this stuff here sh is this stuff it generates programs that I use. XSplit, the antivirus on my computer, Filmora, which is my editing program on here. So if you're doing YouTube videos and you have this stuff as a paid program for it, you could deduct for it. Um, mileage. And this is the way mine looks on mileage. It would have the date. Um, and I usually put it in notes if it's like because I left for a weekend or something. But I usually put the date on to it. My starting address, my ending address for that day, and then I bounce it back for a round trip. So it'll say like end, then it'll have me start and end again type deal for a roundabout trip. But all your mileage, if you select it right, I believe it was like 56.5 cents per mile last year, somewhere around there. That you're getting back. So the guys that go out there retail hunting and drive, you know, a hundred and some miles a day going from Walmart to Target across the board, those mileage, you know, it adds up. Long as you have an accurate record of it, whether it's on, you know, paper or whatever, you have to have a record to show all that stuff. And the best way I've always done it is I just would go on MapQuest, type in my address where I went, get the round get the whole mileage, and I'd go with it. Going to card shows. Um, if you drove to the national, you drove to the post office, anything that does with sports cards, because that's your main thing, that mileage, you get to get a deduction for. So if you don't already have it, start doing that next year, because it's pain to go back in time to build those records up, especially if you get audited. If you have a website, those website fees, your domain name, all that stuff, tax deductible. Promotions and giveaways. This is, goes out to a lot of the different YouTube channels that do this stuff on Instagram and Twitter. Long as you could show what the value was at that time frame of that item, you could use it as a tax write-off as well, too. Your cell phone. So, like, my cell phone is underneath my name, but if I say I use it 80% of the time to talk to people about sports cards, I get what I pay for a year. Say I pay, I don't know, $1,500 a year on my cell phone. I take 80% of 1500 and I use that as a deduction. Same thing with my internet. How much of my internet do I use surfing, looking at sports cards all day? I take that. For a year, so say I pay six hundred dollars a year on my internet, I might use four fifty of it, you know, for a tax write-off. 
The one thing it's very hard to do, and it's really hard for me to explain this, is inventory carryover each year. So, basically, inventory carryover is just what it is. Everything that I did not sell that I bought that year is carried over next year. That does not help you in your write-off. It adds more value to what you already have. It's kind of weird how it works. And with that there, you can, you know, have different markups because the way with sports card stuff goes up and down, up and down and stuff like that too. But what I do is like say Extreme Card Breaks buys a um, – I use the money from Extreme Card Breaks. Just say I go to a show to buy me a PSA 10 Sidney Crosby rookie I wanted. Because they won't take a credit card there or something like that. When I come home, I invoice myself for that card. So that goes to my PC collection. A transaction pretty much nullifies it to a zero. And that at the end... I, that is not being carried over as my business as something you know, I'm going to sell the next year. So I do it two different ways on my stuff, which is really sometimes confusing when you're trying to tell people on to like extreme car breaks, bought those three boxes of tops Chrome black that I opened up. Right. I paid myself for those. There is a transaction on there to it. So those cards in return now belong to me. Or if I don't, pay myself for it. I open them. Those cards now belong to extreme card breaks and I have to set them off and sell them to get my money and, you know, wipe those cards out of the inventory. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm sure we'll be able to talk more about that live because that's going to probably be a lot of questions onto that. But the only way you could get away with, uh, you know, selling yourself something off of an inventory is if you have a business. And like I said, I use the business funds to pay for that item, then I have to pay my business. Otherwise, it's a carryover. Uh, last thing that I wanted to hit that I could think of offhand when I was doing my stuff, airfare and hotel cost. If you're flying to the National and you get a hotel and all that stuff, there's a section you could put all that stuff in there um, because you're doing it for your business as well. If you were setting up a card show in your area and you had to pay for that room, that you put on there, but you also have to claim how much you charged every dealer that day for tables, too. Because more than likely, it's all dealt by cash. So with this here, as you're getting 1099 from PayPal, eBay, whatever else is out there giving you 1099s, it's making your income jump up to where you didn't pay that extra bit of taxes that we talked about. This here is going to take that 20000 Maybe instead you only had 10000 profit after all that. So in reality, your 35000 is now 45000 You may not go up a tax bracket and have to pay on to it. Or you might. I don't know. But this was just a, a real quick thing. I know it was about 20 minutes long to talk about what I'm doing to prepare myself for the tax season next year and how I organize all my stuff. Uh, at the end, you know, I sit there like right now, I have all my categories out, but I won't really be complete to December 31st on to it all. But I at least know where everything's going. And at the end, if I miss something on one of my spreadsheets, as I'm going across and I'm highlighting that whole thing. Once I use it, it goes in yellow. At the end, I'm like, okay, I got these 10 items left. Where in the heck am I putting them at? I may just list them as other pieces onto the puzzle, as write-offs onto it, because it was for my business, and I just can't find the right category, and I just have it as other expense, and they give me that percentage off. So hopefully everybody got you know a little bit of information on this. Look around. It's really going to depend, guys, if I'm at Fort Drum for the week of the 15th for a as a defensive witness for a court-martial. And no way am I involved into it. I'm just a defensive witness or defense's witness for it. But I'd like to either do that over time that weekend when I come back, which could be a Saturday night. If not, we'll do it that fall and Friday because by law, your W-2s and 1099s aren't really supposed to be. They have to be mailed out to you by the last uh, working day of the month of January, which we'll just say offhand January 31st. 
So there'll be some time on to it. Some people like to hop, jump, get their taxes filed quickly and, you know, try to get that refund back and stuff like that there. So I want to try to cater to everybody out there on to this. Um, once the tax program itself becomes live, which usually is until around the 15th or so, I'll try to make a dummy one up just to show what I'm talking about of plugging stuff in that if you don't list all the stuff that you do with sports cards onto it, how it can really jack up and you owe some money to the IRS versus if you list all this stuff, you know, maybe you get a little bit more of a return back. Maybe you don't. I have no idea onto it. But, you know, it is what it is onto it. And the biggest thing is, if you really think about this, say you were buying boxes of select basketball at like, was it $1,000 a box? And you were only getting like two, dollars $300 profit out of it. After you sold that stuff, you know, you could actually take a loss in your business for the year under, even with COVID and stuff like that too. And what that would do, say that my business took a $10,000 loss because of COVID this year and my gross pay was $35,000. Now I'm down to $25,000. I was supposed to be taxed on that $25,000 after I take off, you know, standard deduction and all the exemptions and all that stuff. I may get back twelve hundred, two grand, three grand back. I don't know. You might get some money back. But th this is what some of the stuff is you could put in there to uh, help offset uh, what you made and stuff like that. Again, feel free to ask questions in the comments. Other people might be able to help you out as well, too. I'll try to get back to everybody as I can. Uh, with this, like I said, I don't know what all the new laws and stuff are. I haven't really looked into it. I wait until the beginning of the year because half the time the new state laws aren't out and stuff like that. All right, everybody. Take care. Have a good one, and I will catch you all next video.